Hi, welcome to Movie Review with Daniel. Today I'll be doing a movie review on Blind Spot Season 5. With just 10 episodes of the Blind Spot Season 5 available, after watching and going through them, I decided to do a review on it. The first episode of Season 5, following a drone strike that could have killed Wella, Patterson, Reed, and or Zapata, and most of you didn't think any character could actually do that. But as revealed, it was Reed who lost his life in that explosion. Via flashbacks, we watched as the FBI team, Sans Jane, who was already out of the safe house, tried to escape to the underground tunnels, running beneath their cabin, had been alerted by FB director Matthew Wetz about Marilyn Box imminent drone strike. Despite the team's us, although the explosion left them pretty banged up and Reed was ultimately crushed by debris after he shifted his weight to beat to facilitate Zapata's escape. Most of the episode, however, took place two months after the explosion, after keeping their distance from each other for eight weeks. The team reconvened at a Cold War bunker in Prague, promoted by a New York City incident, in which one of Jane's tattoos suddenly appeared on the Times Square's digital billboards. He also had tasked with breaking rich.com out of the CIA black site where he was being held, which they did successfully, and they agreed to stick together in Prague until they have gotten revenge on Marlene. Marlene, meanwhile, has hired a scary looking team of mercenaries to find the rogue agent since she feels that Wet is unmotivated to do so himself. In the second episode, we even finally learned Patterson's first name on Blind Spot, Season 5, Episode 2. Having the science guy as Patterson's father has always been an inspired idea ever since he was introduced back on Blind Spot, Season 3, Episode 20. Nini's experience marked the second recurring character to return in his final season, following Shuid Ak on Blind Spot, Season 5, Episode 1. The most important development on Patterson's personal front is that her first name is Williams, named after her father. It is understandable that she's gone by her last name all this time. Now, if only we could learn what her space camp name was, I suppose that Nougat will never be unethered by a serious end. Nis entering into the narrative was very organic. The fugitives need Dominic's phone, which Rich does come as stashed atop events back at FBI Cup before he was well turned in by Wet. Since Wet was the only person that the team had any confidence in back in New York, they had no choice but to decide if he could be trusted to retrieve the phone. Rich naturally voted against trusting Wet, whose action resulted in his being confined and tortured at a CIA blast for a couple of months. Wet is a whistle driven by self interest, but sadly, he was the closest thing to an ally that they had at headquarters. Jane's fugitive instincts required looking Wes in the eyes to judge his sincerity. Conveniently, Wes was going to be speaking at the World Collaboration Conference in Helsinki, not that far from the squad's Prague idols. Kind of ironic, in order to determine who's collaborating with Marlene, they must sneak into a collaboration conference. The conference was packed with global political and business leaders, so security was tight. So against partisans, which it is only made perfect sense for the fugitives to call the only international celebrity they knew, Bill. He would do anything he could to help his baby girl. It was the right call by Jane to stay behind and send the emotional partisan so that she could see her father one more time. In the end, partisan's technical ability came in handy on the mission as well. Bill's improved skills sharpened over the years came in handy when he had to create a scene to escape being detained by Ivan's gun. He also gave Ruth his chance to sleep away to meet with Scott and Patterson. The host decided to quietly handle Bill's direct tribe, which allowed him to escape from Ives' people. It is bad publicity to see the science guy getting roughed up on social media. That also gave him the freedom of movement he needed to rescue Patterson later. A simple conversation turned into action on two fronts quickly, offering her to rescue Dominic's phone before the custodian stumbled on it while cleaning the HVAC vent. Only Medley ruined that plan by blackmailing Brianna into being in house by checking out the fugitive potential allies, starting with Afrin. 
Brian caught Afrin with the phone, but surprisingly, probably regretting her earlier territory. Brian tried to help Afrin by upgrading the phone's contest for her. Unfortunately, Ivy found Brian amid that activity. She must have forgotten that new tracker on her phone. Now, Brian, who got disappointed, was in trouble for sure, with Afrin likely not far behind. Red only was let out of my inside because Ivy's grooms were accompanying him as a way to get them into the conference. Poor Cord and Patterson almost got into more action in this episode than they did when snatching Rich from the CIA black site on blind spot since the five episode one. They were just attempting to sneak out through the basement when they stumbled on the bomb underneath the stage. And the worst part was that Wes wasn't the target. Instead, Marlene was trying to eliminate a political enemy. It was enjoyable watching Bill and Patterson team up to design the bomb. It was also funny watching Wes struggling to keep talking when normally he can't shut up. It appears that an ongoing storyline is going to be the team's idols feeling them at the worst possible time when they are out in the field. Kurt just did what he does, taking out the other gun who was trying to kill the White House aide. Sadly, the fugitive made little progress. The phone upload got disrupted and they were blamed for the incident at the conference. Plus, everyone was missing those back at home. Partisan appearance and Kurt, his daughter, Bethany. It's been interesting watching Zapata and Rich both alone beginning to support each other. They were surprisingly empathetic. About the only thing that can be said is that the fugitives are still together and they are not in much trouble as well. Ivy can't have anything good planned for them. The episode 3 of The Blind Force Season 5 continues from where the episode stood stop. Why Mandeline Brock presents a strong external threat. This season has been mostly about internal conflicts. Given that the team has been in isolation for so long, the episode 3 has even more resonance airing now than it could have any other time this year. Accenture Enu, which is the name for the episode 3, isn't afraid to break open the wounds that the team has been nurturing in some cases for years. They have just come together in their makeshift home and they have just started to make some progress. On this episode, I we saw just how tenuous that situation is and how important this is for them to so step lightly that they could have lost everything and each other all over again and that is a frightening possibility so soon after finding their footing. This season is really stepping up the writing and character development. The characters that the audience has followed for five seasons and who have made our choices. Since this character operating in more limited capacity with smaller scope, it is the perfect time to address some of the trauma they've experienced. Pallison and Rich are still working through their own traumas from the last couple episodes. Pallison is worried about her dad and his ability to stay in. Rich is trying to make Archie a home and keep his friends together. Zapata's grief, however, runs deeper. While there are memorial for Reed on Blind Spot Season 5 episode 1, I came to Sledge is a good send-off and it doesn't complete the circle of grief. Zapata's grief is still going to be an ongoing process and importance to address it. Other cop shows might send the character to therapy but being on the run doesn't give them that option so she's going to second guess herself and she's going to miss him that's okay it's part of the process but she needs to be able to open up to her friends which is a concept zapata has always struggled with jane also dealing with an internal struggle in form of her dreams the reoccurring dream where she's watching madeline poison everyone she cares about is disturbing and it's a very real possibility why the execution and content of the dream feels a little cliche, but doesn't diminish Jane's anxiety. The dream sequence excels in the moment that Jane confronts Madeline. Jane and Madeline haven't had many scenes together, but watching Mary Elizabeth, Mastriana, Tony lay out what Jane was really afraid of is spooky. And it is the same subtle delivery that she uses in most of her conversation. It is also striking coming from someone who doesn't know Jane well. Since Madeline has this outside perspective, she can look at the facts objectively why the dream could have easily had Roman or Shepard appear and tell Jane the same thing. Hearing those words from someone outside the situation make it all the more biting. It could be easy to keep this character in their own individual internal struggle. In fact, that's what they are defaulting to given what happened in Iceland, but they need to come together to support each other so they can work together to support and stop Madeline. This is an essential episode that we advise the agents on the run, but the story itself feels a little overall. The dialogue and intelligence the team is about to gather about the house guest tries to paint a picture of a very resourceful killer, 
but it never goes beyond just talk. It could have been more and could have been pushed further. But in the end, it is clear that bringing Eddie to the bunker is just a vehicle for their reconciliation. As a result, Eddie comes off as a one dimensional character and a plot device meant to get a step closer to finding out what Marlene is planning. The stronger of the two plot points is Marlene and Wits. Understandable, Marlene is not happy that Eniski doesn't go as planned and she's willing Wes as it to his usefulness. Wes and Marlene are equally matched, where strategy is concerned, and putting these two characters in an interrogation room and a car is just what we need to assert Marlene's taste of mind. We know that what Marlene wants, but it's been a struggle to find out her plan. This scene filled her void. They also paint a disturbing picture of Marlene as a cold and calculated villain who will stop at nothing to achieve her end goal. Marlene's threat in, is in misdirection and false lead, and that's what she did with Wes in the car. She may have wanted him to make a public enemy or a political enemy disappear, but there was a more important message to send first. That's what makes the moment when the car stops and Marlene Edgeman pulled Brian out of the trunk so shocking it could be enough to have Brian disappear and never heard from again. Killing a character in this fashion sends a clear message to Wes and will make him think twice about who gets involved. It doesn't hurt that Marlene pulled the trigger herself. He's running to Afrin when he gets back to the escort is sobering. He's wounded. He's seen what can happen if they don't cover their tracks and he cannot risk anyone being seen as a collaborator. I don't think this is the end of his wanting to editing. They are going to need to be smarter. They are going to need to take a step back and think about the action. But I don't think Brian's death is going to crush Wes's resistance entirely. Marlin's action are meant to isolate Wes to make him feel alone and hopeless so he will fall in line. He may have to play alone for a bit but there's likely a long game in there. This is an interesting counterpoint to the team time in the bunker. Why they find a way to work together. Wes is having to cut ties and possibly work alone. One thing is for sure, the resistance can be down long with the chemical weapon attack imminent. The episode 4 of the season 5 kept up for where the episode 3 ended. It was revealed that the chemical weapon at the center of Marilyn's plan was a tie to Zapata on Blind Spot season 5 episode 4. The problem is that particular weapon was checked into evidence nearly a decade ago and Tasha was having problem remembering how much about it. That's because it came into FBI possession in a very special day when she and Rich started at the Bury. So that Zapata critical was read and the beginning of their work life together. Which wasn't much help when it came to learning more about the weapon. Although it seems a little early in the final season, at least TPTB found an organic way to have read appear one more time through that time honored mechanism the flashback though trips back to 2011 allowed fans to experience their relationship from its origin as they fought their attraction to each other in the favor of professional pairing until just before Reese's death the, op- the episode also resurrected jonah's fisher last scene on blind spot season 1 episode 13 it also served as a reminder that words is just the latest in a line of self-promoting supervisors with whom Weller and company have had to deal. It is good to see that being dead isn't enough to keep past characters from making one more experience in this final city. Although flashbacks have to be used sparingly, they work this time because it gave Tasha a chance to hear from the loss of Reed at least some out. Frankly, the pair was a lot more fun before life and war began to beat them down. Denying their feelings for each other certainly needed help on that front. It was a difficult balancing act for the team. They needed what was locked up in Zapata's head, while still being sensitive to her grieving. Fortunately, the more Tasha thought about it, the more clearly she was able to ever scrape from the first day, even if it was a painful slow process. It was also hilarious to experience a version of her current teammates, including an even more nerdy partisan who Zapata didn't recognize initially and a snappy weller who was familiar to everyone. Clearly, the puzzle came together. There was their cold case involving a deadly chemical compound and the scientist they interviewed who was now working with Ivy and Eugene had shot on their last mission. Wasn't it convenient that the weapon was being assembled nearby the fugitive bunker instead of, say, South America? After a walk down memory lane, Tasha also got by her hips thanks to her spirit guide read and went in shooting to save Jane and Wella, and at least partially completed the mission. The scientists just need to 
whip up a fresh batch of deadly compound but this had to set Marlene and Ivy back a couple of episodes, right? What will happen next with Zapata now is that she has Ega Jr. or Tasha Jr. on board. She just got over being anxious and now she has been pregnant to deal with as well. Even better, she's got rich as her lone confidence. He resisted Jensen's question from Patterson, but really, how long can he keep his mouth shut when his thing is babbling on and on and on? Besides, as the episode or that storyline proved, keeping Sweet is a bad idea with a squad of five. Well, I was more peer because they didn't manage to dispose Marlene. The nation's law enforcement cars in time for him to get home for his daughter, Bethany's bed. Courts had already made declared that being separated from Bethany was weighing on him. That is understandable, even though he doesn't have Jane with him. Why reach Patterson and especially Zapata apart from their loved ones? Suck it up, Buttercup, right? Ali could keep Bethany safe. Jane was empathetic, framing Bethany's artwork for him. Then she had rich check into Ali and Bethany for court, which may have been a mistake in the retrospect. For Rich came back with the bad but not totally satisfied news that Bethany under one of her aliases has been officialized. Then Jane made the tough call to keep well in the dark until Rich could firm up his intel. Court put Jane in charge of their band of the run for a reason. She was accustomed to making calculated moves that enabled them to stay out of sight. Whereas Wella is a more impulsive type, especially when family is involved. At least she was able to convince him that there was a little he could do and that his getting captured wasn't going to help Bethany anyhow. But it did result in unnecessary tension at exactly the wrong time. After the mission went so well, it was clear that something bad was about to happen. Zapata was the obvious target, walking along in a red infused daydream. Jane took out her cutter but got shot, so they left court to be captured anyway with Jane incapacitated. It will be intrude how he holds up against Ivy torture. It was nice to having none of the words madly in mind game in which there's no one for him to cheer on this episode. The fifth episode found Wella getting tortured by the Dabuzan terror group who is still seeking intel on the rogues agent who is still seeking intel on the rogues agent whereabout upon getting an intense for tale of drug injected into his body well our proceeded to hallucinate people from his past including his one adversary oscar played by once again by Francisco arnold as well as his own father Bill. throughout the hour in hour oscar made well our question his relationship with jane who were never so meet oscar scoffed while Bill, who killed Wella's childhood friend, Taylor Shaw, years ago, tried to convince Wella that he shared some of the balance for Taylor's death, while reminding Wella that he killed dozens of other people as an FBI agent. Anyone that has been so broken like Wella, that really doesn't have a huge effect on people through out their lives until they can deal with it. That's what we see in Wella in this episode, Sales. Who plays the gruff agent? That's tough with his family and the loss of Taylor Shaw when he was a kid. But it's tough. He still gets him and finds out how vulnerable. We all have been targeted like that. That's hard on anyone. After learning of the psychological torture that our husband had endured, Drain tried to assure Wella that he's a good man and those drug induced vision were merely his fears getting the best of him. But Wella wants that Jane's words can't put him at ease right away, and Wella's brunch with the double zone could haunt him for a while. It has affected him. Can he trust himself? That's a big thing to ask and to start doubting oneself in this moment. Going up against such a big enemy like the double sun, you can't doubt yourself. You have got to be fully focused and sure of what you are doing. Unfortunately for the team, Wella did let slip to Ivy Sand while under the influence that he and his fellow agents are old in the European bunker. I didn't say where the bunker is located. And as Jane optimistically reminded me, there are hundreds of bunkers in Europe, but Wella's mistake could not the less make the double zone a bigger threat moving forward it's just a little hint of where they are but the fact that they can take one of them and torture until they get information or take one of their lives they can take the whole team one by one he says that's a scary thing this could be the downfall of the team the fugitives end up running across europe attempting to locate the missing gardener paintings on blind bus 65 episode 6 Unfortunately, Ice Cream proved to be a pussycat. He tried to pull off 
being menacing but once team members confronted with Abali and protect them then in Iceland he changed his tune he was willing to trade a backdoor to a network that Badlin frequented in exchange for the Gardner paintings which he had promised to a scary Russian hitman yeah he's hoping that finding some deaths of Madeline was worthy insanity which the squad had to go through the theft of 13 works of art from Boston Isabella Stewart's Gardner Museum in 1990 has ended up on the storyline of many TV series since then to the point that the Gardner painting has become short-timed. Even on Blind Spot itself, back on Blind Spot season 1 episode 18, when Rich Vesting did the FBI to track down the paintings. So what we got was larger a good old-fashioned keeper episode with ice cream producing and Rich supplying the brains and Jane and Wella providing the brawn. And naturally, this is what the Gardner paintings, they weren't alone in looking for them. Granted, it wasn't all as clear if those other people were just random artists, I guess. So it was enjoyable to watch Patterson Rich and Ice Cream Bounce idea of each other while they attempted to determine who are the paintings. The art restorer, Sutton, was a good guest. Too bad, cut short first. They couldn't ask questions after that. Also, with the release of Sutton's video upon his death, that fired off the search for the paints based on the obscure clues. Fortunately, obscure clues are part of the same specialty or as Rich put it to ice cream, just let her go. The musical clue led Jane and Kurt to Croatia, where they discovered the obscure upside down clue only after they had been tied up on the robbers who took the contents of the safe. It was then that plugging numbers into a less used computer program led to the Irish monastery where Sister Patterson and Brother Rich went. Ice cream can come up with any time moment notice can't he. Solving a couple of more puzzles less to where the paints were hidden after the other thieves are absconded with forges. Of course, the restorer left forgeries. Was it inconvenient that Ilya, the hitman, got killed so that ice cream was off the hook? Zapata then made her only contribution to the episode, appealing to his ego so that he would give the paintings back to the museum. Now, why was Tasha mostly benched this hour? I've been pregnant, hasn't kept her sideline so far. Although, what did just leak out to the team on Blind Sports season for that she was able to go to the Germany on her own to bring home the hallucinating weather? Zapata isn't good to stand for any special treatment very long. Parsing has turned into an overbearing anti protecting Tasha from lunch meat and inadvertently revealing her position to the sharp ice cream. And Rich, who was evolved into a fine judge of human behavior. New done it. It's made perfect sense that Patterson can help her father always on the run in Europe. But come on, he's been new, the science guy. Can you imagine the broadband gadgets which he could develop? So instead, Patterson has become more overly prophetic of Zapata, worrying about child proof lockers in a bunker. If they aren't back home before Tasha gives birth, you've got more significant problem than that. But at least Rich got Patterson to speak as loud where she was going, so maybe she can deal with it during a Quiet moment. Then there's Jane and Wella who were over analyzing themselves and their actions. Shouldn't they have been able to take Sutton alive, which could have rendered much of what followed milk? There were two of them with guns before he could even draw his weapon, so yeah, they probably should have been able to wing him at worst. That shouldn't have been a cause for philosophical deeds. They are good people doing bad things for the right reason. They have to get in the mud to take down Marlene and her people. Which appears want to wipe out people's memory. Yes, it is an end justified the mean situation. Eyes on the price, guys, eyes on the price. After an absence of two episodes, where to return. Marlene couldn't be bothered to deal with him, sending a sleazy lawyer in her place. His brainstorm was to have Afrin send a wire transfer from the NSA to the offshore account, slowing sales reputation only after words met her and found out she was a sweetheart he couldn't follow through then a jealous husband killed her because of the wire transfer oh that was convenient like Ilya getting gone down so even though Sash was out of the running for VP West was still in trouble because he didn't handle that himself plus now he had his only in-house ally a friend suspicious of him this is a good thing the fugitive aren't waiting for West to save them the episode 7 opens with Patterson finding out where the zip was being manufactured and the team had a new mission at hand, destroy all the supplies before Marlene gets to it. 
destroy all the supply at the production facility the former lane could actually put it to any use despite how and rich does come fetching all the supplies it turns out marlene has additional supplies of zip stored throughout the world so there's no stopping her at all costs at best she has been delayed as was clear with her mercenary leader ivy helping with flying the zip back to the us producing this out that ivy and dabuzan were sending out teams to libya and hungary and that reviewed where the zip supplied would be the agents once again teamed up Tasha has a partner with Rich and Cotwella, which Jane do, and as expected, things fall apart on Tasha's end with her and Rich not reaching in time to take the zip supplies off the plane. It was being transported through. In the end, Tasha got stuck on the plane, pretending to be a doctor while Rich is left behind and caught and Jane. Meanwhile, try their best to succeed at the mission on their end at least. But why Cot is out here trying to make madly? The episode really takes time to almost personify. Marlene Sinesta motives with the way she hunts down Kurt's ex-wife and later zips her own son to stop her plan from being derailed. Back when Ivy was interrogating Kurt, she managed to dig information about his ex and the mother of his child, Ali. Marlene now hunts the same woman down and threatens to hold her without trial and also eats at the prospect of their daughter losing a mother to emotionally blackmail and brazen manipulation. Later, solely when we see Marlene's son, Greg, on the fly with Tasha, and how clueless is about Marlene's making him do what he truly grabs the full essence of how low she's ready to stoop. Greg, a doctor, believes he's carrying supplies to the refugee camps in Jordan, whereas he stacked with zips for Marlene. Tasha tries reasoning with him at first, but it is only after forcibly holding him at gunpoint that Greg listens, and despite the ongoing tension, it's a sad moment. Nevertheless, Greg lends the true reality of his mother, the same woman who he thought was sending him with supplies for the refugees. The exceptional use of expository troops isn't lost on the procedure and works extremely well, even at the time when it is wrapping up the five-year-long story of how our team of FBI agents were rogue in the eyes of the door. Tasha tells Greg all about Marlene's terrorism, how she packed her own new job title of director of federal law enforcement and how he plans of ruling the world had turned into a person horrible enough to kill anybody who gets in the way. Poor Greg looked as if it is something he had an inkling about deep down but didn't want to face thoughts explaining why he never bothered checking the crates. He was crying in a way. This was quite the dark coming of age story for the not so prodigal son who was still somehow reluctant time to believe someone poisoning him about his own mother. It is only when Tasha tells him about meddling, having drugged her husband and his father's coffee to kill the man and take over his position at ACL Global, the aggressor started seeing sense. Marlene's burning a trend for a big government as she believed they killed her father was the driving force behind her master plan to uproot the planet of her life as we know it, and she was going to stop at nothing, not even her own son. The realization that finally changed Greg's stand on his loyalty towards his mother and he followed Tasha to destroy the crates he was crying. Meanwhile, Kurt and Jane are also able to destroy the young grace supply. Kurt only despite being Bethany not present with Ali when news the latter's capture reached him. These little wins are round off by Greg, also offering to help them in their plans further, but he is no match for his mother. Madeline finds out about the stress supply and resorts to other practices. She drugs dread and locks him away at the secure site. That's not even she has full knowledge of just to avoid any for that derailment of her plan. With out of good and the conscience to do the right thing, our rogue agents are fighting against an evil force of nature who wouldn't even stop at her own family members to get what she wants if only can do this to her own son. One can only imagine the fear of court or Jane might feel as parents and suddenly everything turns into a big giant win for Mali. What happens to Greg is still a gaping black hole of insanity, but his chances are definitely not bright. Episode 8 of Season 5, titled Ghost Train, opens to the joyous celebration of yet another tattoo getting registered. Rich is ecstatic, it feels like the old witch, but his excitement is shared by partisan only. The rest of the team, Jake, and married, but whatever has happened to them in the recent past doesn't quite participate in Rich's celebration. Even with partisan insisting that the tattoo meant things were under control, the team wasn't having any of it. They were too focused on the zip they had been able to track with Madeline and keep 
tabs on when she might use it to see the tattoo for what it really was. Marlene plan on releasing the zip to people who will be automatically turned into drones is basically no control by their bodies, relying on her whims and desire for their basic need. And given the murderous extent of her plan, it makes sense why it was only Tasha who showed more interest in the tattoo and that comes only after Patterson was able to trace it back to a location that was similar to her from the days in the CIA. Realizing this was the very same location where Jake Keating had been exiled, Tasha decided she was helping them and it was time to hunt her former boss down to warn him about Madeline's true motives and plan. She almost succeeds too, but traveling all the way to Italy exposed her to the Interpol and madly gets wind of where Tasha is currently. With not much time in her hands, Tasha makes it to Keating and the two discuss their agendas briefly. But something seems off. Ethan seems to be working funny, and the overly suspicious man laptop webcam isn't covered with an electrical wire like it always is. Sure enough, Tasha's worst fear are confirmed when Marlene storms in with her men, and Tasha realizes this was all a trap. Keaton sacrificed himself for her, but Tasha isn't the only one who needs saving. Back in their bunker where the team is hiding, Marlene gets wind of this and asks God and Jane Doe to hide, but they too are trapped. Realizing there isn't enough time and they can't clear out all the data in the bunker. While also not allowing it to go to Marilyn's house, Rich and Palestine decide it's best to blow the entire building up. Trotting it will be one of these days where nothing seems to work in their favor. The automatic switch to blow up the building doesn't work out. Palestine has to venture into to do the deed manually, and that's when all falls apart. Traveling inside when the bulb detonates, passing almost likely dies at the end of Ghost Train. Rich watches with his own eyes, and so do we as viewers, and is easily one of the most crushing scenes blind spots has ever aired. What's interesting is where things go from here. Done an episode of making actively suicidal decisions, and now Palestine is gone for good. The team's imminent arrest is being accredited to Matt West, thus offering us a glimpse of hope. West might have been forced to switch sides, but perhaps seeing his former friends one more time might propel him to ignite that fire of right and justice within. And that would be the murderous Marlene's fault once and for all, or he might choose to remain in soccer and not do anything, in which case our actively suicidal team's hidden wishes will come true. In all of this, our only respect was that one scene where Tasha's fire back and most troubling Marlene prior cinematic masterpiece. After incredibly Short incarceration and death, the blind spot team is barreling towards the finish line. The final phase of Marlene and Wes were decided on Blind Spot Season 5, Episode 9, and Blind Spot Season 5, Episode 10. But Ivy and the Zip are still on the loose as we get to wait two weeks for the series finale. So, Blind Spot shortened Fiend season got broken up for a second time, so NBC can promote his first schedule, which is still weeks away. A week earlier, that makes as much sense as many NBC programming choices. Now back to our regular scheduled review. Patterson and the world had to be the shortest death in prime time history. How long did that last? A handful of sins? Was anybody surprised? What's more surprising is that off the grid, Boston almost managed to get apocalypse twice instead of two episodes, which has to be some kind of record as well. Ivy found him twice and fortunately Patterson located him once, just in time to save him. How exactly were he and Rich going to disappear? Once he crossed Dress Patterson and Boston got into FBI colors. It was only a matter of time before the team was released from quite a temporary imprisonment. I suppose when it's a short season, you can't have any tension lingered. Marlins end up paying for having the Ubris to parade around the captured agents. That's just right. Once Patterson, Rich, and Boston got turned loose on the FBI server, it was just a short wait until Marlin went down. The team also found there was a quite a few agents that still believed in them. Off and on throughout the run of blind spots, we asked pondered about Matt Waits. Well, it will kill him to do the right thing. Apparently so. Endlessly, after shaming by Afrin this season, Wet had his only one shining moment trying to bluff his way into the possession of the renegade agent. It's helped that the legitimate FBI agents were willing to back his play. His last word were appropriate worrying that the wrong photo didn't get used with his obituary. Marlene's last action was appropriate as well, wiping her memories with zip rather than stand trial again for her crimes. 
it was also fun to see Ivy plug Marlon Wesley lawyer who made West look upright. Oddly, after the adrenaline rush of the first episode, the second one almost seemed a kind of a breather, which was strange, considering they were trying to track down a gruesome chemical weapon. I blame Cookie Carty for that. Carty's the only person that can turn Rich into a straight man. Carty is not like Jessica Rabbit, she's not bad. She's just drawn that way. Palusin must have been wishing she had stayed in that minor tunnel, having to be the adult in the room with Rich and Carty acting like children. When Rich just come first came on the scene, how likely was it that you could end up working with the FBI? Not very. But where Rich was mischievous, Carty is satisfiable and she managed to bring out the jealousy in Rich on doing months of relatively good behavior. When this is over, well our James about and Partisan and Rich will be lucky to be members of the area. There's no way Neil Cardi was going to get a pardon and go to work for them. Even Cardi, never one of sound mind, knew that she was right in saying that if she, Boston couldn't get in, neither would she. So she bided her time until she could conjure up and escape. And poor Wella Jane and Zapata were just cooling their heels, waiting for the three blind minds to send them Ivy's location. Little wonder caught as the energy to take out six men at the time whenever it sprung into action. The most hilarious moment was watching the hackers all bigger as they attempted to disarm the pressure place bomb and save Boston. Most of Boston was safe and it will be interesting to see what happens with him and Rich in the end. Why is an interim director being shipped in during the middle of a crisis? Yes, Marilyn trash that's of the structure, but they had to be a senior agent somewhere who wasn't under indictment. Instead, there was someone new for the team to deal with when they are trying to save the country bureaucracy. Now, what's going to happen to Jane now that she's been sick? She had her memories messed with before, so maybe her brain was a special degree of resilience. It could be tragic to have she and Wella separated after all they've been through. Tune in in two weeks' time to find out. Thanks for watching today's review. Please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button and leave your comments in the comments box below.